Good morning, Benton High School. Throughout the year, we will have six different presentations on the Benton Way. These are six guiding principles that we feel exemplify what it means to be a Benton Panther. They are be the best, be the light, be a leader, be the difference, be committed, and be proud. We have asked several teachers that we feel exemplify these qualities to present what the Benton Way means to them. We have asked Ms. Hastings to do a presentation on Be the Best. Ms. Hastings is the 2020-2021 Benton High School Teacher of the Year. She has been in education for 27 years and 22 of those she has taught here at Benton High School. Ms. Hastings' hard work and dedication to BHS and its students made her an outstanding choice to present what being the, being the best truly means. What does it mean to be the best? I have a theory. Being the best doesn't always mean that you finish first, and it doesn't mean that you are always perfect. It means that given a set of criteria, you have performed to the most excellent or the most desirable level possible. For many at BHS, excellence is the goal that we set for ourselves. And if you're not striving towards that, you should be. For the 28 years that I have been an educator, I have always felt that Benton expects the best from our administrators, teachers, coaches, counselors, facilitators, staff, and most importantly, our students. We strive to have the strongest athletic programs, the most distinguished ROTC, the top USA skills representatives, the strongest quiz bowl team, the most skilled artists, actors, singers, and musicians, and the top academic achievers in our state. But being the most excellent or the best does not happen without clear expectations, goals, and work. For an example, to become the best weightlifter, you don't walk into the gym and pick up 300 pounds to lift on the first try. You may set that as your goal. Then, you lift what you can, even if it's only 25 or 50 pounds, and train consistently to build muscle that will eventually allow you to work up to 100, 150, 200, 250 pounds, and finally, that 300 pounds, with your eyes always on that final goal. But that goal takes three things, hard work, commitment, and sacrifice. When you consider being the best at school, reach for your most excellent version and vision of yourself. Maybe you've never been a straight A, nor even a straight B student. So, you work to get a better grade on each assignment or test, or you take your teacher's advice and listen to how they tell you to study or prepare for their classes. Then you put in the hard work. Reading, taking notes, listening with a focus, and repeating information to yourself until you can easily access it in your memory and recite it. What is your goal? To do your best to get one more B or one more A on your report card. To be your academic best, you have to work on your commitment. Maybe you don't study for hours every night but you study for longer than you would have last year. You commit to staying focused the whole time you study by reducing distractions. Being your academic best also requires sacrifice. And this is the hardest part because everyone knows the night would be so much easier if you could just play Animal Crossing or call of duty for the rest of the evening. Holding your phone and watching TikTok or Instagram reels for the next hour 
would be so much better than doing 20 minutes of homework. And you'd much rather binge watch a show on Hulu or Netflix or YouTube than write an essay. But instead of giving in to the temptation to ignore your responsibilities while only focusing on your hobbies doesn't lead to that fulfillment of your academic nor extracurricular goals. Maintaining that hard work, commitment, and sacrifice often creates the biggest internal struggles that we face in our high school years. But I can tell you that the struggles are often a bigger part of the learning process than what we understand at first. One of my favorite ways to illustrate this idea of our struggles being a part of our learning process is through a story I tell to my sophomores about the caterpillar and the butterfly. And the story goes like this. A man found a cocoon of a butterfly. One day, a small opening appeared in the cocoon. Fascinated, he sat and watched the butterfly for several hours as it struggled to force its body through the little hole. Then it seemed to stop making any progress. It appeared as if it had gotten as far as it could and could go no further. After waiting for some time, the man decided to help the butterfly. He took a pair of scissors and snipped the remaining bit of the cocoon. The butterfly then emerged easily. But, alas, it did not unfurl its wings and fly gracefully away. The butterfly had a swollen body and shriveled wings. The man continued to watch the butterfly, hoping that the wings would enlarge and expand to be able to support the body, which would contract in time. But neither happened. In fact, the butterfly spent the rest of its life crawling around with a swollen body and deformed wings. It was never able to fly. What the man in his kindness and haste did not understand was that the restricting cocoon and the struggle required for the butterfly to get through that small opening of the cocoon are nature's way of forcing fluid from the body of the butterfly into its wings so that it would be ready for flight once it achieved its freedom from the cocoon. So, the above story isn't completely scientific. Butterflies emerge from a chrysalis, not a cocoon, and the so-called struggle is replaced by the pumping of their wings to move fluid from the abdomen to the wings. But the sentiment is the important point here, and that is, sometimes struggles are exactly what we need in our lives to be our best. If we are allowed to go through our lives without facing our own obstacles, life would cripple us. We would not be as strong as we could have been. And like the butterfly, we might never be able to fly. Academy Award winning actor Denzel Washington often speaks on what one must do to be successful and be his or her best. In delivering the commencement speech at Dillard University, Mr. Washington told the college graduates that everything he has accomplished in his life was due to the grace of God, but he also talked about the importance of the inevitable struggles and even failures that life will throw at us. Fail big. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life, and it can, be, it can be very frightening. It's a new world out there. It's a mean world out there, and you only live once. So do what you feel passionate about, passionate about. Take chances professionally. Don't be afraid to fail. There's an old IQ test was nine dots, and you had to draw five lines with a pencil within these nine dots without lifting the pencil. 
The only way to do it was to go outside the box. So don't be afraid to go outside the box. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big, to dream big. But remember, dreams without goals are just dreams and they ultimately fuel disappointment. So have dreams, but have goals, life goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, daily goals. I try to give myself a goal every day. Sometimes it's just to not curse somebody out. <laughs> Simple goals, but have goals and understand that to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. In order to achieve your goals, you must apply discipline, which you have already done, and consistency every day, not just on Tuesday and miss a few days. You have to work at it every day. You have to plan every day. You've heard the saying, we don't plan to fail, we fail to plan. Hard work works. Working really hard is what successful people do. And in this text, tweet, twerk world that you've grown up in, <laughs> remember, just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Remember that. Just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Don't confuse movement with progress. Mr. Washington, stress says that we won't always be successful, but his advice includes ways we can always be our best. Goals, discipline, consistency, with an eye on our progress. So again, I ask, what does it take to be the best? Every day, you have 86,400 seconds to become your best. You know that some of these seconds will be devoted to sleep and to meals. You know that Monday through Friday, many of these seconds will be devoted to school. But what are you doing with the rest of the time? Are you making the best use of each second? To do that, you'll need to follow a pretty simple plan. First, have dreams. Have some idea of what you want out of life and have it be something that you can actually control, like a strong marriage, a great education, a tight family, a healthy body, a strong savings account, or an enjoyable hobby. Then set goals, like Mr. Washington urges. Set the goals that will help you to achieve your dreams. Then make plans. Put plans into place that will lead you to accomplish your goals. Practice, practice, practice to become better, to become stronger, to increase your retention, to read faster, or to be better at the skill you want to improve. Put in the effort. Work even when you're tired or you'd rather be doing something else. And finally, Accept that you will struggle or face disappointment. Such setbacks are a natural part of success. Find a quote that works for you, that helps you understand when you fail or that when you struggle, that this is a natural part of life. Maybe something like, that which doesn't kill me can only make me stronger, or Pain is just weakness leaving the body. 
when you struggle and you fail or you face that disappointment, go back to the planning board. Find out what, you, what set you back and do at least one thing different to overcome it. And then practice effort and repeat until you achieve. At Benton High School, we have some students who are often employing strategies to be their best. Take senior Andre Lane. This young man is one of the most genuinely nice people that I've ever met. And who doesn't love a teammate who can earn ice cream for the entire team? Andre is a superior athlete. But that isn't the only thing that makes him one of our best at BHS. From what administrators, coaches, and teachers say, Andre epitomizes perseverance through the way he approaches both academic and athletic tasks. His positive attitude is as contagious and uplifting as his smile. Senior Kane Simmons. As a senior athlete, Kane gets much attention from fans of his sports but there is so much more to him. His teachers remark on Kane's good cheer and strong work ethic in the classroom. Community leaders notice this young man outside of the school building as an upstanding citizen. Kane adds that throughout his life, he has gone through many struggles and they've all had something in common. They teach him lessons that make him a better person. When I asked Kane about struggles in his life, he said, one that comes to mind is when my football season got canceled junior year due to COVID-19. This taught me to never take anything for granted. It also taught me to want to make the most of the time I had left in high school and to be the best I could be on and off the field with the time that I have left. Senior Reagan Davis. She's a scholar, a cheerleader, both for school and competitive cheer, and another one of the kindest people I know. Reagan works hard to be at the top of her activities, but she also studies hard. She treats teachers and fellow students with respect, even through the stressful times. Reagan admits that because of her success, it might look like she has it all together. However, with all of these things comes pressure, judgment, and sometimes even hate. Reagan says that she's a perfectionist, so she has an extremely high expectation for herself but she says she fears failure. Reagan adds that whether it's school, cheer, or the way she treats people, she has always told herself that she has to make the choice every single day to work hard and stay positive. Reagan ends by saying, don't get me wrong, I'm not always successful at this, but again, I just have to keep trying to become the best me that I can be. It's not about being the best, it's about being your best. These three seniors represent some of the best that our school has to offer. So many more of you also work hard every day. Your classmates may notice how you succeed, but they don't always see the goals that you have set for yourself and how hard you work every day to achieve those goals you'll find that life is often like that. Many don't, won't, and can't know all the work that goes into your being your best. They don't see all the times that you tried, but you failed, and then you got back up to try again. They don't see all the times that you struggled, but overcame a life adversity. And they don't always see the consistent self-discipline that you have employed. As your teachers, counselors, administrators, coaches, facilitators, and mentors, we honor the work you complete, the failures you overcome, and the struggles you endure. We rejoice in your can-do attitudes, your endurance, and your perseverance. We recognize that you have within you the power to overcome and achieve. So, be the best. It is the Benton Way.